climatology is a part of a physical geography. So, like geomorphology has been derived from a general geology, climatology also has been derived from a science subject and that is physics. It is essentially derived from a meteorology, but meteorology is pure, pure, pure science eh, with a lot of calculations, with a lot of physics. Eh. Climatology doesn't going to be having it so, and particularly when it is going to be in geography, it is never ever made out to be also. And when we say that it is never made out to be, basically it means eh, that eh, in geography, Climatology can also be converted into a social science. A lot of descriptions are going to be added and that makes it different. Meteorology, logic, that is logic, science. Geology, that is logic, that is science. And when it is going to be climatology, it should be, but that is not so. And this is largely, uh, this is largely something that has to do with the nature of uh, the nature of the subject in India, not exactly globally. So, in India, the subject has been taught at the university level in such a manner as if, like I'm going to give you a description, eh? there are a lot of quotes in this case, eh? that is according to someone, that is the amount of energy that the sun, say, sun is able to emit, eh? this is the amount of energy that eh, is radiated back according to x, y, z, and eh, this again goes on to get diffused or dispersed. They don't know that. Mind it. Geographers do not go on to know the difference, a lot of difference between diffusion, dispersion, reflection, refraction, and consequently a variety of type of these things. They do not go on to know that at all. And not everyone, of course, there will be some of them. But then, as we said, there is a good number of fringe students happen to be taking geography and consequently, they do not respect the subject, eh? they do not respect themselves eh? and eh, of course eh, the conditions in India are not such that eh, that can be respected as well. So climatology all in all is going to be part of eh, meteorology and that is the best way in which it can be studied. The nature of climatology is that you have to of course study how is it that the sun's rays strike the surface of the earth, eh? how is it that the earth goes on to get heated. The heating of the earth, to what extent it leads to the generation of winds. Eh? These winds eh, can go to move horizontally or they can go to move vertically. And eh, in whichever manner that they are moving, in whichever way that they are moving, eh, is it that they are circulating the atmosphere? And in this process of circulation, is it that water is also being circulated or not? And if water is being circulated, then is it that it is leading to a tropical cyclone formation or anything else? Eh? And if tropical cyclone formation is taking place, eh, then eh, how much amount of energy is expended in this case? Eh, and so on. You can imagine this eh, entire of the sequence. The advantage of eh, uh, climatology is that it's very, very, very scientific. It's very conceptual to such an extent eh, that once you have studied the whole of climatology, you'll feel like that eh, it's like one chapter one chapter. There are not too many facts that you have to know, like it was in geomorphology. There are only concepts, concepts, interrelations, interrelations and interrelations that you need to know in climatology. That is number one. Second is, uh, it is very imaginative. In the sense that is, uh, you can imagine, if you can imagine, that is the air is moving in such a manner, then air is moving from Pakistan, uh, then uh, and you know temperate cyclones and you know the way that the temperate cyclones move, eh? you can always go on to know how is it that eh, these winds are coming into India and in what manner is it that they happen to be coming to India. Now, this is going to be the second way. The third way in, is going to be associated with, eh, third aspect is associated with, eh, the nature of eh, the topic itself, if you have eh, a slight hold of eh, logic and you can logic a lot of things out, eh, of course, eh, which is eh, a rare thing in ge geography to a large extent, eh, unless eh, you happen to be from sciences background, eh, then eh, you can go on to find the co-relationship yourself. The fourth part is very, very contemporary. And when we say that the subject is contemporary, basically it means eh, 
that uh, this subject uh, is uh, all about uh, all about everything that is happening in day to day life here there everywhere of sorts uh. that's one the second is uh, you can study and revise this topic every day in the sense uh, that you can revise it uh, when there is a heat wave that is going on you can revise it when there is a cold wave you can revise it when there is a western disturbance uh, you can revise it when there is a tropical cyclone so it's very very contemporary the sixth is that uh, you can you have a lot of sites in this case eh, which can actually go on to help you build imagination that is eh, how is it that the winds are moving eh, from arabia to india arabia to gujarat and to rajasthan eh, from a eh, caspian sea region to here and so on so forth you know this part and this is something eh, that eh, you know it pretty well as well so it it keeps on going in such a manner that's the way it is going to be that's another component associated with it then the other advantage in this case is uh, that uh, climatology is one such type of a topic that you can study it not only through textbooks you can study it uh, if you have a concept base you can study it uh, except for ncert you can study it from anywhere we do not going to prescribe ncert at this level and for this topic uh, largely because uh, the core relationship and authenticity associated with uh, the book uh, leaves a lot to be desired and you know why it is going to be so it had been prepared uh, and written by people with questionable character in uh, those last uh, 60 70 years uh, and uh, it's a different matter that uh, some people have got marks but they are not because of ncert is because of their own intelligence it's because of their own ability to process this information that they have then it so so that's the way that they have seen it that's the way that they have analyzed it as well the problem with the study of climatology for a student is going to be because it is going to be very interrelative if the students think that they leave one topic and going to jump on to another one they won't be able to understand at all forget about anything now despite the fact that there are many topics that may not be there in the subject at all for example structure of atmosphere composition of atmosphere despite the fact that these topics may not be there they have to study it despite the fact uh, that uh, there may not be a topic like humidity in the atmosphere they have to study it uh, because uh, when the subject is going to be showing itself with so much amount of a linkage uh, then there is no way that we can go to separate one thing from the another from another and so on everything has to be seen in this composite manner only it is only in composite manner that uh, we need to see it and that's the way it is going to be then the third problem associated with it uh, is uh, going to be drawing of the illustrations uh. now while drawing with the illustrations uh, for example if you show that the winds are rising winds do not going to rise in such a manner at all on a rotating earth a fluid body like atmosphere it can never be straight at all so the winds are always going to be rising in such a manner so when you go to have a diagram that goes on to give a completely different type of a picture for the examiner and because it gives such a type of a picture that is always going to be advantageous drawing a wrong diagram doesn't going to take you anywhere in this case at all of course you can always going to draw it right it's your choice then the uh, fourth disadvantage in this case is going to be there are going to be good number of books that are conventional conventional books like that of ds lal savindra singh now they do not serve the purpose of solving your problem at all this is largely because eh, they are far removed away from reality there has to be something very very modern very contemporary and incorporating a lot of things eh. and eh, you may not going to know the advantages and advances that the science may have taken and we say it largely on account of many factors take an example take an example that is uh, the role of kelp the role of uh, sand the role of urban areas uh, in reflectivity is not going to be generally dealt with in good number of books at all particularly those that are going to be of a conventional nature it is only with a modern approach and with a modern scientific temper that the books have been written that these things are going to be included also 
that's going to be another component. The last component is that the difficulty that the students are going to find it, that they will going to find a good number of uh, people talking about concepts uh, which are going to be absolutely rubbish, absolutely absurd and wrong. Now, it's not your fault that you're going to fall in trap of those type of people. It can be students, eh? it can be bookshop owners, eh? it can be some, maybe some coaching institutes as well in this case, not some, good number of them as well. And then you, we, we are living in this age of so-called edtech companies eh? where eh, there'll be someone who is going to wear a jail-like cloth, eh? written something on, uh, here eh? and eh, they, all of them will go on to start calling themselves educator and thinking that they can go on to teach wrong or right because they have been sold very well marketed very well by the company that doesn't mean that it is education these are the dangers these are the problems that the students have to face in this case to have more such discussions and analysis subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications on our upcoming videos